when you look back at the original Copyright Act that set all this stuff up, it was a 14-year term. It, was, it didn't include music, by the way. Music didn't come until a couple of decades later. And you go back to 1790 when they, they started all of this. And you know, eventually it included music, and then in fine art and sculptures, and then it would go uh, sculptures. Then it would uh, go to things like uh, performance as a result of the, uh, the creation of the player piano, and, and that created mechanical rights. And then they redid it in 1909, and so on. Each time they made these revisions, they keep expanding the term. 14 years, then 14 plus 14, then 28, then 28 plus 28, then 28 plus 28 plus 19, then 50 plus life, then 70 plus life. And those are the ones off the top of my head, and there have been some increments in between. And so the cynic will say that, uh, you know, when, at the expiration of 35 years from January 1st, 1978, which is when the 76 Act actually came into effect, then at that point, the Disneys of the world who do not want to lose Mickey Mouse are going to put enough you know, pressure on copyright to extend it once again. And there's a pretty compelling argument that they'll do it. What is, why shouldn't copyright be perpetual? Um, well, because the Constitution says it shouldn't be. Uh, the entire policy of the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, that talks about this, that creates all intellectual property in this country, is premised on the notion that for a finite period of time, authors and inventors of the creative and useful arts and sciences will be granted uh, a monopoly on their works, be it an invention, a trademark, or a copyright. But this is balanced against the notion that we, the people of the United States, have the right to use this if we jump through the proper hoops. One of those hoops is pay a royalty. And so this is an absolute fundamental constitutional policy. And if you have a, a perpetual copyright, you know, you've basically killed the notion that anything could ever become part of the public domain. And therefore, that's unconstitutional. I mean, that's in its essence uh, you know, contrary to the intention of the people who set this up. Which, of course, is because the answer I get, I mean, the reason I suppose is because it's not a positive development for a society, a free and open society. I think it's horrible, yeah. I mean, if it were to go forever, and I'm not sure if life plus 70 is fair either. Well, that so. is a problem, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a real problem. And, and when it was extended, wasn't, didn't the dissenting opinion in that case talk about there was uh, the stuff that was covered by the extension, only 2% was available to the public? I don't recall that, but that, do you, do you happen to recall who actually said that? I think it was but Potter Stewart. I don't recall that. That sounds probably pretty persuasive to me. And then the, the majority are going to say, it is our obligation to be in step with the rest of the civilized world, and this is what you know, Europe has done, and uh, Buenos Aires Convention, and we need to be in harmony.